everyone. Hello. Dark and stormy night. Was it a dark and stormy night? Yeah. Suddenly a shot rang out. It's what? <laughs> you, oh, she said dark and stormy just as we said that. Oh. Um, it, it was it was a running joke uh, on the Peanuts comic strip, I think, that Snoopy would be writing a novel, and it, it was always, it was a dark and stormy oh. night. Suddenly a shot rang out. No, this is far as the other day. Okay. All right. So what are we doing tonight? Tonight. Well, um, it is a long weekend, so happy long weekend, everybody. But the reason for the long weekend is a somewhat more somber one. It is, of course, uh, Veterans Day, I think, if you're in the States. Yep. Or uh, Remembrance Day here in Canada. Now, my parents, I can remember my parents calling this Armistice Day. Yes, because that's what it originally was called in the yeah, That's right. They, I mean, they would have grown up with it being called Armistice Day. When... I'm just making sure your microphone's on. I'm laughing because how did you think I knew that? Why? <laughs> so I looked it up on Chatty. No. Oh, <laughs> I'm having fun with AI this week. <laughs> All right. Try and stay on top. All right. <laughs> Lightening up. Yeah. Um, armistice means ceasefire cease truce comes from the Latin for arms and stopping. Oh. Armistice. There right? we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what this armistice, this particular one is, is referring to the ceasefire that happened um, between the German Empire mm -hmm. and the Allied forces on the Western Front uh, in 1918. Now, the reason we do it uh, on November the 11th is because that was when the ceasefire was um, meant to take place uh, at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm on the 11th day of the 11th month. Uh, it didn't quite happen that way because communications aren't what they are now. People kept fighting right until the end of the day when they all found out about it and there was much rejoicing, I suspect. This all happened uh, in 1918 uh, at Compagnie, France. Uh, the name was changed to Remembrance Day later to honor um, service men and women uh, in the subsequent skirmishes, not just World War I. I but it started in World War One. I. I remember it today is Can Canadian person, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Veterans Day. I learned this. In the States. How did you learn it? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, it doesn't always mean an end to the war. Uh, in this case, it did, though. It culminated in the Treaty of Versailles, um, whenever that was signed. I'm not sure. Anyway, the drink itself doesn't date back that far. The drink itself was actually made by a guy named Eric um, Hekkonen from the Zigzag Cafe in Seattle. But it is meant to be an old-style drink. So um, we are going to Give mix you up an armistice. You know what was kind of interesting is What's I that? just remembered when you said that um, back in probably 2000s, the early 2000s, we did a trip over and it was me and Keith and Judy, Keith Waters, who was one of the founders of Abe, Abe Books. Anyways, we went and did a trip over and we actually visited Verdun, which mm. is, yeah, oh my gosh, if you want to see something, I had a eerie sense of deja vu and i think probably everybody would have that eerie sense of deja vu deja vu <laughs> deja vu driving in uh so it's, it's a massive memorial there's so many unmarked graves but what's really creepy is when you go up to the actual museum component uh, they tell you that you're probably going to find a relative in any one of these books of people that are in this graveyard and of course i did you know just looking back at our names but i don't know if necessarily they're related but definitely our names you walk around you behind, probably are. yeah. You walk behind the, behind the building, and there is this room in the basement that is nothing but bones, and these are all the I guess unclaimed bodies. It it's very creepy, um, uh, but really, wow, brings the point home. And when you actually get to the entrance, there's a giant lion 
just sitting there kind of like this and that's represents germany i guess and poland i'm not sure what that was but you should know you know everything <laughs> not if i don't look it up <laughs> all right uh but anyways that was probably one of the most interesting places i've been because it had like a little village that you could walk through where the village used to be and they warn you don't go off the beaten path because there's still mines or bombs i've that heard area. that thing yeah yeah so it was, it was really really interesting so anyway, sorry, back to your drink. What are you making? That's fine. So this is actually called the Armistice. It was made in honor of Armistice Day, like I said, by uh, Eric Hackman in Seattle. Mm -hmm. It's one and a half ounces of rye, half an ounce white vermouth, quarter of an ounce of both Luxardo Maracino, Maraschino and quarter of an ounce of green chartreuse, two, uh, two dashes of bitters of your choice. I chose Angostura because it seems like it would be more, uh, um, you know, era appropriate, I guess. When you're shaking that with one hand, I was just waiting for that cup to go flying off. That would have been kind of pretty good. Yeah, so crazy. now it says. We're just going to set our presentation up here. Go. It says no garnish, but... You can't help it. All right. Well, it's very pretty. I do like the look of this. So we... Uh, Check it out. So all of my friends, um, Larry, Leslie, everyone that has ever served their country, uh, hats off to you, and we're going to drink a toast to you here right now. Absolutely. Cheers to you all. Ah, okay. That's fun. Okay, ugh, sorry. Um, it's rye, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, rye. I should, I should... Okay, well, it's probably more applicable for you folks, but not me. Um, yes, you know, I'm, I don't know what to say. It tastes like an old tiny drink. It does. You know, uh, it's not overly complicated. Sitting around the fire kind of idea. Exactly. Perfect. What's next? The next one. It's called a sidecar. So this a sidecar is now this does go way back. This goes back to um, during the time of the First World War. Actually, it either came from London or Paris. The story here is that um, there was a U.S. Army captain. Uh, stationed in France in World War I, and he would get one of his servicemen to drive him to his favorite little French pub bar. Nice. Um, presumably because then he'd, he could get all liquored and the guy would drive him back, and he would arrive in a sidecar. Designated driver. Yeah. yeah, anyway, so, I mean, he, he got to be on good terms with the barkeep. He arrived one night, he had a fairly bad cold. The uh, bar tender said, well, we'll fix you up. I'll, I'll mix you up something that'll get rid of your cold and produce the sidecar for him. Okay. Um, this is, again, many drinks from this era are fairly basic, nothing too fancy. This is, depending on how you mix it, it's either a direct descendant of a drink called a brandy crusta, or it's just a daiquiri using brandy instead of rum. The challenge is always to balance, as it usually is, to balance the sweet. And I'm excited the sour. that it's actually a daiquiri kind of. We, in daiquiri in a in a different sense. Oh, so in other words, I'm not going to like. There it. are three ingredients to it. Sorry. Yeah, you might not. Well, you might. I don't know. It, there's no rum. Does it have sugar? No. No. Oh. All right. Okay, we'll find out. But. We've sugared the rim, so you might like it in that. Oh, sense. that's what I meant. I was pointing at your glass. Oh, I Sorry. see. Yeah, I didn't see. He's got a sugary rim. I didn't see it. So we are going to do something. Yeah. I oh. <laughs> like I said, three ingredients. Um, we're going to do an ounce and a half of brandy or cognac. I'm going to use in cognac, but I don't think it matters for this. Three quarters an ounce fresh squeezed lemon. 
OEM. I think that is that you, Rosemary? No, that's Sean Lee. Hi, Sean Lee. Hey, Sean Lee. And the same amount of an orange liqueur. So here's where it gets tricky. It depends on the orange liqueur you use as to how well this ends up becoming balanced. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. What are you supposed to use? Uh, uh, well, every every recipe has a different oh, I version see. of it. So. Got it. Let me shake her on up. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll shake it. <laughs> I cannot believe how dark it is in here. Oh, we just all waiting for the storm. So my friend Rosemary is sitting and Brian are sitting at the uh, ferry terminal right now. Can you imagine they got on the 6 p.m. The very last ferry coming back from Vancouver. Thank goodness. And Brian's lovely daughter's graduation, which is cool. Yes, congratulations, Lise. Yeah. He's a Victoria police officer. Yay! Okay. Well, this looks yummy. Sorry, Car, this was, uh, this entered into print in 1922. Go ahead. No garnish? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. See? You're absolutely right. So there's, we're using orange peel. I think this one we're going to do a little curl of orange. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh, that looks really quite yummy, actually. So, hopeful. Look at that. That look absolutely delicious. Let's give it a whirl. Here's another theory about where the name sidecar might have come from. Sometimes, if like like if I made a double batch of that, oh my god, that's good. Or a batch and a half, I'd mix it up. I'd have too much, and in bars frequently, if if the drink more than fills the glass, they will give you a shot glass with the remainder of the drink in it. And that shot glass is called a sidecar. So is this supposed to be a cure for a cold? Yeah. Oh my god, it's delicious. I, you've got to try this. This is absolutely delicious. It's only three ingredients? Yeah. Let's try this. And if I like it, then you got to know it's going to be going to be good and it's made with brandy. Yeah, yeah, that works, huh? It's really good. So the trick is, if you know, if you, if I was to have used triple sec, I think, in that it probably would have felt too sweet. If I had used a different recipe that called for more brandy, more lemon, probably would have been too sour. So uh, that that one worked out all right, huh? That one is very good. I see you drinking this in the future. All yeah. right, you've got one more. Last but not least, we're talking about Charlie Brown, I think. I just got the bridge. Yes. Uh, really? Yes. <laughs> so, a recurring theme in Charlie Brown, and this makes sense, I guess, this Charles Schultz was about that age that this would have figured um, prominently in his childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, the air war in Europe. Um, was fought back in the days of biplanes and triplanes. So there's a guy called the Red Baron. Uh, that isn't something just in Snoopy's head. Oh. The Red Baron's real name was Manfred von Richthofen. Uh, he was born May 1892. Uh, he was pretty much the undisputed champ of the air war in, in World War I. He had 80 aerial victories um, until uh, he was finally shot down. He had a, uh, a Fokker triplane, so three levels of wings, and he painted it bright red. The Suzuki, well, you know this from Snoopy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, did, yeah. did he wear a red scarf, too? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All the photographs of him are in black and white. So oh, okay. I, it, it didn't mention that. What it did mention was that, I mean, you know, he he started to prove himself fairly young. He was 26 when what? he died. Yeah. Um, so he started to prove, prove himself fairly young. They gave him, uh, what did they give him here? June 1917, he got his own four-squadron ring of planes. Now, 
he had he was famous for his bright red ones. So this the other planes they decided to paint their planes bright colors too. This became known as the Flying Circus. Oh wow! Like Monty Python. That's <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's that's where they came from. Oh my god! How cool. Anyway, in April 18, um, there was an aerial battle over France. Um, he was actually in pursuit of a fairly green Canadian pilot. Oh, no. Um, a more experienced guy called Roy Brown in a Sopwith camel. Snoopy, I mean, right. Snoopy had a sop with oh, camera. He totally did, that. yes. That was, that was the name and model of um, Captain Brown's plane. Uh, he, he did a steep angle dive and fired on him before pulling up. Right about the same time, though, there was an Australian anti-aircraft nest who was also firing on him. Uh, anyway, long story short, um, he took a bullet to the abdomen and oh. he crashed, and, and that was the end of him. But there is a Canadian contingent to that, yeah, too, right? totally. So. I had no idea. Now we know the story of Snoopy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm uh, kidding. I mean, it, it's fairly, um, <laughs> it was fairly biographical, you know, right, yeah. right down to the kind of, of plane that he had. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's very cool. So now you're um, you're gonna make this drink. Yeah. So this is a gin drink. It's gonna look different because I'm using this. Oh, Empress. Yep. Very nice. I am not sure how old this drink is. I couldn't really find any information on it. Maybe I just didn't look hard enough. Uh, you know, I'll find out for you. <laughs> Goody goody. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm being so helpful lately. Driving him nuts, to be honest. This calls for a dash of everything. Oh my gosh. Except for gin and orange juice. So we'll do the gin and the orange juice first. Mm -hmm. The color probably isn't going to work out too well, but I don't really have any London dry clear gin at the moment. And that tastes so good. Excuse me. So that's for a dash. If you recall from last time, mm, in there. dash is between an eighth and a quarter of a teaspoon. They actually call it a fifth of a teaspoon. So if you want a fifth of a teaspoon, you're going to go just a little less than a quarter teaspoon. We learned this from the A&W McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> right? You all know that. I one. love that stuff. The third, the McDonald's has their quarter pounder. A&W comes up with the third pounder. And W lost. Why? Because everybody thought that one third was less than one quarter. Yeah. Or so not quarter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Didn't no, you're lost. right. You're right. Yeah, but I said one third. <laughs> oh goodness! Now what you seeking? I need the grenadine. Oh, I do believe it was in the fridge last time I saw oh. because you were making some. Right back. Of, he was making some kind of a fuzzy drink. So yeah, goodness sakes. Well, hopefully you all have some nice plans this weekend because it's, yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit rainy. Well, it's uh, actually tomorrow's supposed to be not too bad, breezy, but, you know, otherwise, okay. Oh, that's good. So, I mean. That's like tiny, tiny, tiny little dash. Yeah. So this is basically gin. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> right? Okay. Which, uh, again, kind of. I don't mind. Speaks to the. Uh, I can take it in the air a little bit here. This also goes in the coop glass. You've got the one hand going again. Make sure he doesn't drop that freaking glass. I'm trying to hold it away from the mic. Oh, I'm just or at least from one of our mics. That was right in the mic. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's kind of pretty. It's a mold. It's not just purple, it's mold. Actually, this is beautiful. It's really close to the original color. Yeah. It's kind of surprising giving. Look at that. I don't know. Isn't that beautiful? Like, look at that. Okay. 
Let's give this a whirl. See what it tastes like. Gin with a little bit of drops added. With a little bit of this and that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, it's good. I like straight, like I like martinis with gin, so that's really good. No, you don't. You it's like good. martinis with vodka? I like both. Oh. I'm not picky. I prefer vodka, but I do like gin. Yeah, it works. It much? does. Yeah, it's got so, just a little extra flavor. Yeah, so don't don't uh, sneeze it. You know, when they ask you for a dash of this and that, it actually does make a difference. Well, those are delicious, and uh, yeah, happy happy Remembrance Day. I don't, that's a weird thing to yeah, say. Yeah, it doesn't really sound right, does it? Um, have a good weekend. Have a safe weekend. But before we leave, we should probably mention that there's a couple of of you know birthdays that are happening that we should probably mention. One is our son will actually be <laughs> turning 25 uh, early next week. So that's kind of, when well, you said that 26 year old for the Red Baron, I went, yeah, oh, I know, that right? was creepy, right? Um, so happy birthday, early birthday to our, our darling son, Jesse. And um, Zach, your nephew. Right, Zach, got, was it today? I think so, 24? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's that. And then, so my, um, my great nephew, actually. Yes. Yes. Great nephew Zach. Uh, I'm. I can't imagine why he would be watching this. I know he's happy not. birthday to him anyway. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, um, so yeah, a toast to um, toast to all those that were in the service, and uh, I hope that all the current warring in the world oh. goes away. Totally. Let's peace on earth. There you go. All right. What are we doing next week? I should listen this time because apparently I didn't listen last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I lost my copy, so there we go. I don't know. We might. Um, it's been a while since we've done anything with wine. Hasn't it? Oh, hooray! Yeah, I thought that was about time. Right. All right. So we might do a little thing on uh, comparing some different kinds of wine. Actually, what I what I had in mind is there's uh, there's Shiraz mm -hmm. and there's Syrah. And then there's something called Petite Syrah. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I, I know that it's the same kind of grape, but from a different region, different treatment. No idea other than that. So maybe we can learn something. Or maybe I can learn something on that. We shall see. All right. Well, have a great weekend, a long weekend, you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.